Yes, that seems to be. Sunrise is just 15 degrees over one Earth uh, 33 hours. Preparing to go up there. Well, you're ready for those moon hours already, aren't you? Outside the hatch now. Coming in the hatch. It's all yours. Okay, you have it? I've uh, got it. Okay. at four hours, 40 minutes uh, since Kevin depressed. Okay, now I'm starting up the ladder. I got uh, Mitchell in. You now you can see over there in the side, uh, Al Shepard starting up the ladder. Yeah. Takes, takes a little leap to get up the first step. First step's a long one. It's meant to be that way, so that the ladder isn't crushed upon landing. It's a, it's a little hard. Shepard about to crawl okay, in. Okay, I was up at the top of the ladder waiting for the LAC to come out. started walking back from uh, the far point where they set up the uh, seismic experiments in the central station for the scientific uh, experiments. Uh, they've gotten right on the timeline. Uh, they're supposed to button up this hatch at uh, 2.27 uh, Eastern Standard Time. That's just three minutes from now, and they're just about right. of the uh, Lunar Lander and Terry's CBS News color coverage of today's walk on the moon will continue in a moment. So Alan Shepard and uh, Ed Mitchell are back in and Terry's after their four and a half hour walk on the moon. They are closing out. Uh, See, he's going through the hatch. Closing out the uh, uh, lunar module now. Shepard is just uh, going through the hatch, and we'll close it after that. He's been up on the porch, so-called, of the uh, lunar module. A little, uh, uh, you know, that's what it is, a little step, a large step, on which they can uh, work uh, before climbing down the ladder, or after climbing up uh, to get all their gear back and stow it. You can hear them as they begin this close-out procedure. like that when he flies on an instrument approach and he's very busy doing something, he'll do that, ooh, or <laughs>
double thing might not be impossible. There might just be a chance to do that tomorrow. There tomorrow. It's a little early area of the two small craters that they didn't get to today. Well, Al's now added his first words on the moon to those of Neil Armstrong and Pete Conrad. He said, it's been a long way, but we're here. A rather personal reference, I suppose, to his six years of being grounded with an ear disorder before he finally got back on flight status and got to make this flight. Neil Armstrong, you remember, said, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Pete Conrad said, man, that may have been a small one for Neil, but it's a long one for me. <laughs> closed and locked, you just heard them say. Now they begin to repressurize the cabin, and uh, they've got a long stay aboard now until tomorrow morning when they make their second walk of the moon, if all continues to go well. If there are any difficulties now in the uh, spaceship and its oxygen supply or uh, uh, battery power, any of its consumables, they could uh, blast off from the moon. They will have had at least one walk and a re-rendezvous uh, with uh, uh, the command ship flying overhead with Stu Rosa. That, uh, Rosa, that doesn't, uh, isn't expected. Uh, expected that they'll get a second good walk in tomorrow morning when they'll walk further from the lunar module than man has ventured from his spaceship before, almost uh, a mile away to go up the side of Cone Crater. This has been a day of solid achievement in man's exploration of moon, uh, but the accomplishments were uh, not made without some difficulty, certainly. Even before the moon lander began its uh, descent, the lander was imperiled by a, com a computer problem uh, the two uh, lunar module crewmen were not in any danger, but the mission certainly was. The trouble involved an alarm signal which indicated the computer would abort the mission, send it right back uh, away from the moon's surface uh, if a descent was tried. Well, engineers got to work on the ground at uh, MIT and at Cape Kennedy and in Houston, and by golly, they worked out a solution, but with just four minutes to spare before they would have had to make the critical decision to send the lunar module around in at least another uh, lunar orbit before they could have tried the landing. And then came a brief radar failure, which cleared up just 90 seconds before the agonizing decision would have been required to either abort the mission or send the lunar module back up uh, to rendezvous with the command module or uh, to go in for a landing and try it then. Even on the moon, there was some problem with Alan Shepard's communication gear, and that delayed uh, Al and uh, Ed Mitchell's moonwalk for almost an hour. The walk itself had some troubles, as you've heard, concerned with the firing of the small charges against the lunar surface as a test of its seismic properties. Uh, the time lost prevented the two astronauts from collecting all of the rock uh, and uh, soil that they had hoped to collect. Maybe they'll be able to make up some of that tomorrow, although that's uh, certainly indefinite. Other activities, uh, including planting an experiment package on the lunar uh, surface, were accomplished on target. And there will be time for collecting more rocks and soil during tomorrow's second, even more ambitious uh, spacewalk. For Shepard and Mitchell, safely back aboard their LEM, it's been a very hard day's work. They've been up for 20 hours now, it included uh, cutting off from the command module, uh, making the uh, landing, which was a uh, right on the bullseye earlier this morning, and then these long walks. We'll be standing by, of course, while the astronauts catch up on their sleep uh, tonight on the moon, and then we'll be back on the air tomorrow morning at 5.30 Eastern Time with live, continuous color coverage of the second moonwalk. This is Walter Cronkite uh, for Wally Sherrod, CBS News Space Center in New York.